How's it going, everyone? And welcome to episode number two of Mazda Motorsports Moments. I am your host, Tony Laporta, and I'm proud and honored to get to walk you through some really cool moments in Mazda Motorsports history. Today, we go back in time to July of 2019 and relive that victory at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Here's a little bit of fun numbers for you. The CTMP victory came seven days after Mazda's win at Watkins Glen International. The Watkins Glen International win came seven years after Mazda's last victory in the prototype era. The CTMP race happened on July 7th, or for you number buffs out there, 7-7. Oh, and one last little bit. On his way from the airport to the track, then head of operations for Mazda Motorsports North America, John Doonan bends over, picks up a penny, and it's from 1977. And you might be asking yourself, Tony, what's with all the sevens? Well, Check the history books. Which Mazda RT24P wins at Canada? That's right, the number 77. We didn't make that up. Seriously, you can go look it up yourself. On today's episode, we visit with Jonathan Bomarito and Tristan Nunez and talk to them about the weekend in Canada. And we also talk to winning engineer from the number 77, Miss Lena Gates. So let's get right into it on this week's episode of Mazda Motorsports Moments. All right, so now we're joined with drivers from Mazda Team Yost, representing that number 77 Mazda RT24P, Tristan Nunez, the man with the best flow, probably in the garage. I'm talking about the hair, not the voice. Mr. Nunez, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day here in South Florida. And uh, Bomberito did not like that compliment. Don't worry, Bomber. You are definitely <laughs> the guy in the garage with the best beard, easily. Mo Marie just said he's, he has seen you grow one in four minutes flat my man you are outside you're in nature where a guy like you belongs how you doing today brother great glad to be here good to see you it's been a while and uh see my boy tristan on camera it's uh looking forward to this yeah see, and you, you, you say the hair comment but when we did drive together we were known as the best hair car that was like our thing we had I to mean, be known for something i guess <laughs> 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 uh i didn't know about that but i can certainly see it oh yeah no you check 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 some old like articles they say a lot about the hair okay as a combo i uh i'll have to learn how to read first but nunez i'll, I'll definitely go check that out anytime <laughs> i'm watching you guys race it's almost as enjoyable as watching you play the guitar so we're talking about canadian tire motorsports park uh the seventh round of 2019 you guys go on this incredible tear to kind of kick off the summer of 2019. We just spoke to Oliver Jarvis and Harry Tinknell last week about that one-two finish in New York at the Salem Six Hours. Now we're talking to you guys about Canadian Tire. So let's just jump right into the start of the weekend. Three rounds of practice at IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship races. The 55 car comes out of the gate quick. P2 in first practice. The 77, Tristan, you guys were a little bit off the pace. Talk to me, what were you guys looking for in practice on the 77 car? So, yeah, I think we were actually, it's been, it's been so long ago, but I, I do remember distinctly we had an issue um, with the car, with, with the balance of the car. Because uh, at, at CTMP, the, 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 pit, or the, the paddock is a bit slanted. So I think the, something with the scales was a bit off. So we had a bit too much tilt in the car. So we were losing a lot of, um, a lot of arrow in the high-speed corners. And, I mean, CTMP is pretty much 90% aero corner. So um, the car was a bit uncomfortable to drive initially. Uh, but yeah, we definitely found some pace in the race. And then Bomber in practice number two, the 55 car stays the quicker of the two Mazdas. But you guys slip down the leaderboard from P2 and P in practice one down to P5, about almost seven tenths of a second off the pace. It's been told to me by a couple of people that the setup on the 55 felt a little bit better but still you guys weren't where you wanted to be. What was practice like on your side of the garage? Yeah, uh, I think, I, I mean, I remember the weekend as a whole being productive in that way, like working through uh, setup stuff, not necessarily making sure we had a good race car. Uh, CTMP is, is such an important flowing track to have a good balanced comfortable race car in traffic that I remember a big portion of the weekend uh spent on that not necessarily just outright pace 
and I don't remember the ins and outs of practice too, but it could have been older tires. We did longer runs, uh, trying to see how the car was working on older tires. But as a whole, I remember the weekend really going well and uh, working well with the engineers. I do remember uh, the 77 having some setup issues. And at the end of the, you know, as it got closer and closer to the race and it was just like, okay, put the car on the 55 scale, put all their setup on and just send it and see what it has. And I, and, and their race turned around for them. So, um, but I mean, what an incredible, uh, finish my oh boy getting his first win and <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we'll skip through qualifying. You guys battled in New York with the Acuras. It was funny because in uh, Canada, it was the 54 from core that was doing really well, but then they put it on the pole. They end up going to the tail of the DPI field for changing the qualifying tires and the starting driver. So that bumps all of you guys up one spot. That puts the 55 bomber. You guys end up starting off pole outside of row number one. Tristan, you and the 77 come up to starting on the outside of row number two. So it's super similar to what happened in New York a week earlier. Uh, the race gets going, and Jonathan, you go right to take in the fight to <laughs> Castro Neves and the Acura. That first lap was just epic, and the highlights show you guys come through the last couple of corners at CTMP, and you're just beating as doors off tell me about that opening lap brother did they tell you to just get it on the first lap or you were fired what was that all about well you, you know when you when you have an opening in this series and you have some pace um you don't know if that's just your car's a little stronger on cold tires on those first couple laps and it, if that's the case you may never have an opportunity again so i felt like we were good on cold tires uh i had uh Helio was getting some te temperature in his tires up the, the big long straight on that opening lap. And he was actually kind of scrubbing some speed. And I had a good run off of, uh, you know, 5B there and kind of looked uh, to try to make the move. And, you know, it was, it was an aggressive first lap, but you, only because you don't know when you're going to have another opportunity. You could get that track is so fast such high speed flowing corners if you get held up by you know you you catch the tail end of the gt pack and only like five laps so if you if you don't capitalize when when you have a chance that you may never have a chance again so that was kind of my mindset the team hadn't given me any you know details on uh push hard or, or this and that it's it's a two hour and 40 minute race but these races are sprint races so we're just kind of that, that race for me personally is just kind of like maximum attack hair on fire the whole race it just feels like that because it's so fast and so much traffic well and then you guys by lap seven coming out of 5b again where you had that really good run on the opening lap you and elio get stuck behind gt traffic as you said it just takes such little time to catch up to them you make a really decisive move you pin the seven up against some some gt traffic and you go through and then man the the 77 is still right there behind you guys but the 55 goes on to dominate you guys end up leading every lap in the 55 till the final pit stop every lap but one there was a pit cycle i think where the five mustang sampling car leads but you guys are just you're out front running away so tristan in the 77 understanding that you guys struggled with setup all weekend you weren't as quick as the 55 where's your guys's head in the middle of this race, in the meet, while Jonathan and the 55 are up there running away. Tristan, what's going on in the 77 on the radio? So, yeah, I mean, that, that, whole, that whole thing starts really, um, you know, when we're gritting up for the race, because the issue that we had in the practices and qualifying, um, you know, hats off to the crew and the engineers, they found it right before we went to the grid. So we, were, we did a last minute change on the scales Little, I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Probably like 10 minutes before we had to, you know, go to the to the grid to grid up for the race. So, you know, when I'm in the car, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, now, now I got to feel these changes. I got to see what's different. And sure enough, I mean, the car was was on it. I mean, the, the car was hooked up. Um, you know, pace felt good. You know, I'm, I'm right behind. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing all this unfold with uh, with JB and and Castro Nevis, and and I was like. And that was a good move because he's, he's, he had this huge run uh, going into turn eight, which is, you know, the fastest corner on the track. Just It's just a slight lift, maybe a touch the brake, and, you know, you're, you're bombing in. There's really only one room for one car, and he, you know, he sticks it on the inside, you know, probably like, you know, right, right side tires in the grass a little bit, and, 
think you touched door a little bit, you know, it's with and the competition and, you know, the EMSA series, you, you gotta, you got you gotta, you know, you gotta put it out there, you know, he's, and, uh, and JB certainly did that. So, you know, as, as me and my mindset, I'm like, okay, you know, I learned something new every day. So, you know, of course I try to do the same move on cash and Everson. he's not going to let two months go by. So, um, he made it a bit, a bit harder for me. So, you know, at that point I'm kind of just, you know, thinking in my head, all right, let, let's try to, let's try to, uh, have a different approach on this and, you know, sacrifice a little bit of lap time for, for some fuel. Maybe, uh, you know, I think Lena was on the, on the radio, you know, giving me fuel numbers to hit and, you know, it's, it's a tough task to, to have when, when you got, when you got guys breathing down your neck uh, from behind you and trying to, you know, manage it through traffic. So, um, you know, I, I did the best that I could with, with the fuel numbers. And I think that ended up working out cause we got an extra lap and it cycled, uh, you know, us in the right, right spot for the pit stop. So, um, you know, it's, when you're in the car, you're kind of just following orders and, you know, trying to hit the numbers the best you can. So, uh, you know, Alina did a great job with strategy. She ran that race like a true pro. I mean, she is, and she's got lots of Lamont wins under her belt. So, um, you know, it's an honor to, to be under her, but, um, yeah, no, it was, it was a crazy race from, from, from start to finish when I handed it off to Ollie for sure. So obviously you talk about Lena Gade and, and last week we spoke to Larry Holt. We're going to talk to Lena at the end of this call, you know, because the engineering side of these races is just as important as the driving side. You guys would agree with that, but it's a really dominant, it's another dominant race by Mazda. Like we said, Jonathan, you guys in the 55, you just check out, you're leading the whole way. You're just having a great run up there. Now let's fast forward all the way to the last pit stop. 38 car, the LMP2, stops over in turn five, brings out, well, doesn't bring out a full course yellow yet, stops over there in turn five. You guys realize, hey, this is it. We're right at the outside of our fuel window. Let's get in. So both cars hit pit lane. Each of you first kind of talk me through what's that like on the radio. They're telling you the 38 stop. You're coming up to a pit window. Both of you kind of just walk me through that bomber. You know, you were out in the lead. Let's start with you. Yeah, so my uh, my double stint uh, went as planned. I mean, Vince on the the pit box has given us gaps, and um, personally for me, that I I look back at the season and you always kind of judge yourself as a driver, and that was one of my best weekends that I had all year. Um, just from a from a selfish, you know, how you analyze yourself, and I, I was just in such a good rhythm with traffic and it, just having a good time. It it seemed like I was just it was just kind of our, our day to catch the traffic at the right time and just the flow of the race, everything was just going as planned. We led the, the first three stints, I think it was, like you said, until the very last pit stop. I was now, Harry was in the car now for that last pit stop right before that yellow came out. So I was listening on the radio. Ben said pit, pit, pit. It was kind of a last minute call. So we could, we knew we were in that window. We had a feeling it was going to go full course yellow. So they made the perfect call. Both cars did the 55 and the 77 to pit. Um, and, you know, it was a, a wheel gun failure and we, we lost some time in the pits. 77 got us. And again, we're, we're back to a one, two finish. So it was, uh, you we look back on it now and I, I think it, everything happens for a reason. And the 77 was extremely deserving of winning that race as well just like they did um yeah we had a, a a tire gun issue but that's racing that stuff happens and they did an amazing job to put themselves in a position to capitalize on that and you know ctmp it is not hard or sorry it is extremely hard to be running up front the whole race like both cars did um one wrong move in traffic you're either off the road in a wall or you're getting passed by your competitors so um both cars again had an amazing weekend and uh we had a little bit of bad luck but the 77 ran a great race i mean absolutely no doubt and and in the accident with victor franzoni and that number 50 uncos cadillac you're right it does bring out a really long yellow flag then a red flag and you guys get restarted with something like less than 12 or 11 minutes to go yeah. and then yeah man the the race goes green all the way to the end the 77 you and ollie just the thing was on rails it seemed like in those yeah. last 10 minutes and yeah. bomber you guys do your job and stay right there in second the checkered flag waves 
And Tristan, I know you're on the timing stand, but Mazda comes across to win. And now this time you're on the winning side of it. Uh, I, I, were the tiers bigger in Canada or New York? I can't, I can't even imagine. You know what? It, it's funny to, it's funny to think about it because I think, I think they were actually bigger in New York. Um, it was just the, you know, the Watkins Glen win was just so emotional to be a part, you know, to be a part of that was, was just huge. You know, like I said, it, you know, we didn't win, but we did finish second. It was a one, two, we finished right behind the sister car. It was, it was an artistic finish. You know, we're, we're finishing, you know, um, nose to tail. So it was, it, it, you know, and, and when we got the second one, I was just kind of like, this can't, this can't be real. So I think it took probably a week for it to, to set in. And, um, you know, we did have a longer break after that. So I did get to finally celebrate and, you know, unwind and really appreciate what, what we accomplished in those two weekends. Well, uh, I like that, how you put it in artistic win. Bomberito, uh, sounds like Tristan was scared you were going to beat him up after the tire gun failure <laughs> on your guys' pit stop. That wasn't going to happen, was it? No. I mean, we've had wrestle matches before, but he knows all <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean... Friendly it, wrestle matches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you look at it, when you look back at it, I mean, this is like, it was something out of a movie. Like, two yeah. one-two finishes with the order getting reversed. I mean... When you are truly in a team environment like that, I mean, it worked out perfectly. I mean, yeah. both both cars got wins. Both crews on each car got wins. The engineering mm -hmm. staff, I mean, it is a family, and we all got to experience it. It was uh, I, it was textbook. You can't you couldn't have made that up. It worked out perfectly. So, I mean, no, I mean, Tristan is. It's a weird relationship me and him have. I, he's kind of like my son <laughs> slash brother. So, <laughs> so to see no, that, yeah. for him to get that win, it was super special. I well, mean, and, and, uh, for Mazda, for everything, but I mean, for me and him especially, that was uh, that was a really cool moment. Really I, cool. I like it. I like it. Nuno says it's an artistic win. Uh, Bomberito says it's a textbook win, and we learn that there's a brother-son relationship we never knew about. <laughs> Guys, mm -hmm. I, I honestly, it's it's a shame these shows have to be so short because you two especially, I, I could have sat and talked with Harry and Ollie for two or three hours last week. I could sit here and do the same with you. But Bomberito, it looks like you've got trees to go cut down or, or fish to go catch with your bare hands out there in the <laughs> wilderness. So yeah. I'm grateful for you to stop and talk to us. Nunez, I know you've got to go comb your hair somewhere right now. So I got to go brush the horses, actually. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that means their hair and yours. But, guys, thanks so yeah. much for being here. It was great to relive these Mazda moments, and I can't wait to see you guys again at the track soon. So we just wrapped up talking to our drivers, Tristan Nunez and Jonathan Bomarito. Always fun talking to those guys. Now joining us from the top of the timing stand with that number 77 car. Well, that's where she was during that winning weekend at CTNP. It's Miss Lena Gade, obviously a winning engineer at the Rolex 24 at Le Mans and member of Multimatic Performance and Mazda Team Yosh. So Lena, thanks very much for being here. Uh, we want to get right into it. We're talking about CTMP. We're looking back on that weekend. So talk to us about how practice went for you guys on that 77 car and what challenges you faced right off the bat. So um, that race weekend at Mossport was a little bit messy. Um, the 77 car actually was struggling with setup um, right from the very beginning. Um, we'd had all sorts of issues and we couldn't really find what um, some of the, the problems were. Um, and in essence, it was really holding us back. The, the car on new tires was not too bad. As soon as we um, started to put some more laps on them, the imbalance in the car became quite large. It was very, very sensitive, very nervous. The drivers were really struggling to get a lap time out of it. Add to that, with Mossport, you do need to have multiple laps at the track so that um, the drivers can become familiar with um, the track itself and the amount of traffic. And the whole thing was conspiring against us going into warm up. All right. So then Lena, the green flag flies and things take off, obviously super fast. 55 just runs away. You guys in the 77 are doing a great job maintaining pace, but it's all 55 really uh, at the start of things. Then we get inside of that last hour and things really get crazy. It's somewhere like inside 40 or 38 minutes to go. The 38 car stops over in corner number five and Right then and there, everyone knows there's about to be a full course yellow. His door comes up, uh, but Bo Barfield and IMSA gives everyone a chance to get into the pits before they call that full course yellow. What's the intensity? What's the attitude like on the timing stand when you know that there's about to be a full course yellow? What happens then? 
So um, the 77, um, as a crew, had um, not had the best of races in terms of making that, you know, that decision. When you see a car go off, you've got to come into the pits um, for the previous races. And we'd made mistakes beforehand and we'd lost opportunities. And that was a really, really, really um, big learning point for us going into Mossport. So at Mossport, when that car did go off, it was pretty certain that there was going to be a caution because there's nowhere else really for uh, the car to go to be recovered uh, or to get out of the way and be safe. So we knew it was coming. Um, so it was a pretty easy choice. And I think, um, I don't know if the original tension all weekend with having problems had meant that this was just a small drop in the ocean, that the stressfulness of that situation to make that decision, to make that call that the car needed to come in was a panicked one. I don't think so. I think we we knew what had to be done. So we called the car in. We knew we had to make the stop, that that was going to be the crux of, of the race, that that was going to be the deciding point in the race for where everyone was going to finish. So I don't think it was, a let's say, a stressful kind of situation. The thing is, afterwards, um, irrespective of what the result was, the one thing that we took away from it was that we finally knew what we needed to do to make the the right decision when you get that is it going to be a yellow kind of scenario coming up and we, we nailed it at that point so uh, thereafter it became easier to make that decision let's say in other races the way mazda team yosh do you guys pit your cars the 77 ends up coming in right behind the 55 there on pit lane and then the 55 ends up having this really hectic pit stop a tire gun failure slows down the rear tires getting changed on the back end of the 55 meanwhile you guys are doing full service on the 77 from where you're sitting on the pit box what do you know what do you see what's going on in that final pit stop so typically when you've got a pit stop going on um you've got to make sure that everything on your car is is going as planned. So the fuel's going in, the tires are being changed, the driver change is happening, the windscreen's being cleaned. Um, if there's debris on the car, damage on the car, you're fixing it. So you're, you're really focused on what you're doing. Where I was sat on the pit stand, I was at the very far end, as far away as it gets from the 55 car. So I actually couldn't see what was going on in their pits. But Lars Ogilvy, who um, uh, helps out with some of the strategy stuff on on 77 he was sat effectively on the opposite end of the pit stand to me so he could you know he could see what was going on on the 55 because we've got a linked intercom system that we can just talk to each other on it's not nothing that's broadcast as our car was finishing off its pit stop that's when Lars said there's a problem on the 55 and um I think I don't remember if I thought it or if I said it but I do recall thinking are we going to need to do a pushback are we going to need to get out of the way of the 55 to release from the pits because this is an ongoing thing at every race event you know if you come in the pits together you don't want to get tangled up if the, the space isn't enough for the two cars so that's the first thing that was going through my head now I trusted the mechanics enough to know that if they needed a pushback they would have just made that choice and they would have got the car back and out the way so in my head um all I was really focused on was what was going on on the 77, knowing that something was about to happen on the 55. We then left the pits and the 55 was still in in its pit box position. And I think that's when I said to Lars, what exactly happened? He said, I'm not really sure, but it looks like there's been a problem on one of the rear tires. Um, I, I think it was Ollie in the car. Yeah, I think it was Ollie in the car. And I think he did say, what's going on on the 55? And I said, I'll get I'll update you when I know um as he went back out so you kind of focus on on what you're doing even though you're conscious of something else going problem the problem with having issues elsewhere is if you get distracted you miss something on your own car at some stage so you guys on the 77 lena end up leapfrogging uh your teammate in the 55 that full course yellow comes out it's it's a full course shell it's the first one of the race so everything gets calmed down sorted out we go back to racing not three minutes later i don't think Victor Franzoni has that huge off over in turn three in the number 50 Junkos Cadillac. They end up going under a really long full course yellow, ends up red flagging the race to extricate Victor, who ended up being okay, thankfully. But now you guys go back to racing with something like less than 12 minutes to go. It had been a really calm and straightforward race of just long green flag running. And then all of a sudden this race just gets flipped on its head. Did you foresee any more craziness 
inside those last 11 minutes or were you more confident that we were going to see this thing through the through to the end and you and the 77 were going to stay up front um there's always an unknown with where you are in a race and you never take for granted that the position you're in is where you're going to finish and I, I don't think there was ever a single point where I thought we've got this one in the bag it's all going to be okay you know we we just need to to sit tight and we'll all be fine I think there was still lots of things still going on and mm -hmm. everything from do we need to continue our fuel save because we've done quite an aggressive fuel save through the race um was there a need for fuel saving was it going to get us anything do we need to relay that to Ollie did we need to do anything different from where we were at is there anything on the car that was going to mean that we might not be able to finish the race and actually Obviously, with the 15 minutes to go, we had plenty of fuel in the car. We knew um, we were good on that front getting to the end of the race. It was just basically a case of get out there and just and just get the result. Um, I don't think I don't think there was ever any any assumption that there was going to be a race win. In my mind, all I could think of was we need to get the best performance. If we get the best performance then whatever happens at the end, if there's another car that is, let's say, more dominant than us, is quicker than us, we'll just let it play out with the drivers because that's their job in the car. And, you know, Ollie will, Ollie will deal with it. He'll, he'll be fine on track. I don't think there was ever any kind of assumption we were going to win it. So, of course, when it did happen, I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Wow, that was a great result for a really, really terrible weekend. Yeah, and then the checkered flag flies, and you guys have done it again seven days after Mazda's dominant one-two finish at the Glen, their first win in the prototype era. It had been a really tumultuous 2019. It had not been a great prototype era for Mazda, if we're being honest. And now you and your team are responsible for not just getting the 77, their first one of the season, but for bringing Mazda back to victory lane again. Once is good, twice is better. That had to be such... An incredible feeling to be on the top of the winning timing stamp. Um, it was really, really cool. Um, I haven't been involved with um, the Mazda team for that long, really, at that stage. You know, I kind of come in at the back end of 2018, gone to a test at Daytona, um, kind of reconnected with some of the guys I was familiar with at Team Yost, with Ollie, um, and then got to meet a lot of new people from um, the team in America and then also the Multimatic guys who come come to the team from Canada and then all the Mazda people. So for me, that, um, let's say, connection was not as strong as maybe other people, but what I did notice is how much it meant to the rest of the team. All of those people that have been involved on that project for a long period of time who've seen all of that kind of um, pain is maybe a really strong word to use, but there, there's been a lot of emotion that's been invested into um, the whole of the project. So it was really nice to see, and especially seven days later, because to emulate that kind of result from one week to the next is hard enough. To do it in a, in a team where there's you know, been so many questions asked, so much criticism, so much, let's say, social media attention, everyone's got a better idea of how it should be done. Yeah. Um, that is that is a really tough thing to do. Personally, for me, um, I hadn't been with a team that had won, as in a race engineer, I hadn't been with a team that had won um, a race like that or the one in Watkins Glen for quite some time since I'd I'd left my previous uh, project with with Yoast. So it was really nice. Added to that, it was a little bit emotional on my side because um, it was a few months really after my father had passed away. So for me, I was really kind of, oh, I really wish I'd been able to let him see that because it was it was all a little bit, a little bit too late afterwards. But then having said that, um, I guess the team around us was so strong. It, it was actually a really nice feeling. And, you know, it was in Canada. And that's a really big thing for Multimatic because it was a home race for so many people. So it was really cool. Lena, uh, I really can't say thank you enough for joining us here today. I know it's much later in the afternoon over in London. It's a true joy to get to talk to you. I think Mazda Motorsports fans are going to enjoy this really unique look on that win at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So thanks a bunch for joining us. Have a great rest of your weekend. No problem at all. Thank you for having me. And, um, you know, hello to everybody that's at home. And um, I hope everyone's kind of coping in this really unique situation that we find ourselves in. 
Um, we will be racing again soon. Um, just the actual date we don't know yet, but it's great to be uh, part of this. Well, that'll do it for another episode of Mazda Motorsports Moments. This week's episode, a lot of fun. Always good to get to talk to Tristan Nunez and Jonathan Bomarito. Great friends right there as well as teammates. So stick with us here on Mazda Motorsports social media because coming up in a few days, we're going to relive the team's third victory in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at Road America. For everyone at Mazda, I'm Tony Laporta. Thanks for watching.